Hello everyone, this is sort of a trailer before the actual review because I have something to sell. You see, I bought these to sell at Brocon and I knew I'd have some left over, so there's about five or six left over. So if you want one, you know, the size of your head, um, message me on the Hagen Facebook group. Uh, it costs about $35 plus postage and packaging. Um, and it looks like it's covered in cellophane, so it looks like a horror creature or something. So, message me and I you could be you the enjoy. proud owner of a little hagen. Mm-hmm. First come, first served. Look at the time here. Although I admit, I know that you guys have difficulty understanding twenty-four-hour clock because you all think it's military or some shit. But that is half eight almost. Mm -hmm. And look how fucking bright it is. Welcome. Fucking slightly further north than most of you guys are. Yeah, we get sun about the same year, about 11 30, 12 at night. Yeah. Well, it's not really sun by then, but it's like the afterglow of the sun going down. It's still The sky is still a little bit blue at midnight. It's, it's bright enough to drive without the lights on in the car. Doo -doo -doo. We just saw the purge too. Anarchy. And. I did enjoy it, but it would have been nice to have purge two, three, four and five as separate films instead of all jammed together at once. <laughs> it was five, it was four movies. Okay, because you know, okay, either you know what The Purge is or watch our vlog for The Purge, but um... Go watch our vlog anyway, even if you do know. Yeah, twenty. you have 12 hours where for some reason all crime is legal, so no, therefore people go from kill. it's like nine hours or seven hours. No, it's 12. Hours. Is it 12? Seven to seven. I thought it was like midnight to seven. Okay. Nah. No, no, they'd already been around for hours and hours when they were like, it's only seven hours left, we can hold out. Okay. So, that's the concept, and it is a mind-bendingly stupid concept. All crime is legal, you're not allowed to use above class four weapons, which apparently, in this one we learn, is some kind of explosives. Mm. Uh, and government officials of rank ten and above are immune from the purge, so you can't go and kill the president. Yeah, it, it's a stupid concept, but it's a concept that as an exploitation concept, it's got... Pretty much infinite possibilities for sequels. Yeah. Unfortunately, so, I'm glad about that. Unfortunately, this movie series kind of takes it in. Nobody's going to go and rob stores, or nobody's just going to go and hijack a bunch of cars. Nobody's just going to have random brawls in the streets. Or anyone's going to use electronic crime to steal a bunch of money, which, you know, make yourself a computer virus, have it lay dormant or something for a year, then, you know, set it to only work during that 12 hour period, have the money siphoned to you. And you're like, no, ah, I'm fine. Instead, there's going to be roving gangs of murderous psychopaths in the street, more roving gangs of murderous psychopaths in the street, more roving gangs of murderous psychopaths in the street, and rich guys that will give you a hundred grand to come and sit in their house while the family takes part in killing you. I want the purge, Pirate Bay, where it's just a guy torrenting as much as he can in twelve hours, or upload, you know, uploading, you know, illegal copies of films to the internet. That'd be great. Recording sports matches without the express written consent of the provider. Yeah, I want that. I'd watch the fuck out of that. But this one, okay, I said it was two, three, four, and five together because you know, all you got here are four separate concepts, which would be decent purge movies by themselves. There's you, the couple that's having troubles that get abandoned in the middle of the purge and are uh, running away from a roving gang chasing them down. You're going like, oh, no, 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 no. You have two, a mother and daughter, like both adults getting chased down by the government. Because the government are all like, no, no, people are killing people in the purge, so we gotta like, choose random buildings and destroy stuff. And they team up with Frank Grillo, who's basically playing the Punisher. Which, you know, by the way, Punisher movie, Frank Grillo, yes. And you got those two things, and then you got the most, the guys who are hunting the first two groups are doing a most, hunting them for, for rich people so they can do a most dangerous game thing. Yeah, it's like, they, they get shoved in the back of a van, taken to a big stage, it's like, Oh, now we're going to start the bidding at 200,000. Yes, yes. And then they're released into like an indoor country garden and chased down by rich guys. And those rich guys, they've all got like night vision goggles and there's no lights in this thing. So these rich guys are obviously so fucking shit. They gotta have people who are A, blind, and B, they're not blind. So they're not even having the illusion <laughs> of, of a challenge. Yeah, the guys they throw in are unarmed. Yeah, unarmed. In the dark, can't fucking see, and you've got weapons, and you are, you know the fucking area, plus you got night vision goggles. So, how shit are you? Also, the director has a thing for machetes. Every knife, apart from one in this movie, and there were a lot of knives, was a machete. Plus, there is an anti-purge terrorist group. 
And they got the government are also killing people as well. It's like all of these would be good concepts for themselves. And then during the most dangerous game part, you get randomly the door bursts in and you got this big damn mo heroes mo moment, which is basically imagine Samuel L. Jackson playing uh, Malcolm X crossed with the leader of the rebellion from Running Man. And he's like, ah, kill these mo rich motherfuckers. <laughs> Fuck you, rich motherfuckers, and your fucking rich money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's just... <laughs> As exploitation series go, it is nice that... I, I don't know if this was the point from the beginning or if they just brought this in for this one, but it is nice to have an exploitation series which is trying to be about something. In this case, the overall message seems to be the entire point of the purge is so that, the gov so that people go out and find homeless people and kill them. Then there's no poor people. Yeah, they want to kill the poor... Basically, so this, this film is about, in the same way that the... Body Snatchers is about communism. It's about um, the rightward drift of American culture, possibly gun fetishization, machismo, you know, stuff like that. Basically stuff that I think is full of shit. Not in the way that I agree with it. I'm thinking broadly I agree with the points the film is trying to make. Though it's an exploitation film, so it's not making those points in a very intelligent way. But it's entertaining. It was entertaining. I, I went into this... I didn't like the first Purge. I really didn't. I thought it was stupid. Oh, it was. And I thought it was not fun to watch. This, I went in with very low expectations and they were, they were, they were better than I thought it was going to be. This one's like, it's like zanier than the previous one just because they throw so much fucking stuff at you. Oh, never a dull moment. <laughs> oh, and there's also the over, there's the other movie which is the, the Punisher trying to find the guy who ran over his son. Yeah, that's what the Punisher's doing. He's trying to, trying to get the guy and, and murder him and then in the end he decides not to for some reason and then then yeah, you got the, the random, they're all like, we're going to go to our friend's house, do, 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 do. And then they're in this house, you know, this, the father is involved in, like, you know, locking up the building to make sure it's safe. The building's not safe, even for modern-day America, because you just have to knock the door. There's, like, one tiny little Yale lock to get into the entire fucking building. And then on the way out, they're all like, oh, the building's locked up tighter than a drum. And then these guys can literally, it's a wooden door, and they just open it. It's not even locked. It took them about 30 seconds with a buzz saw to take down the entire building security. Yeah, and they didn't even need to do that because it wasn't, wasn't even fucking locked. They could have just fucking booted it. It's a wooden door and a wooden frame. It yeah. Could kick will wreck it. And you got like older people are selling themselves to the purge, you know, so the rich people can use them. And I gotta say, I, I, culturally, it would be very interesting to have a, a method of suicide which keeps your family provided for. And, the assisted dying act find a psychopath who wants to kill you in an interesting way get a sum of money from him to give to your family yeah it's you know there is a victimless crime except that you know there is a victim <laughs> <laughs> it's like murder with consent i'm fine with that but then again, I'm the one who thinks that you should be able to, you know, you can you can give your body after death over to medical experiments. I think you should be able to give, leave your body to necrophiles because they're not allowed to legally have sex with their, you know, their object of their sexuality. So you should be able to leave your body. So like a necrophile, they should have like a, a dating agency, you know, to pair corpses, consenting people's corpses and necrophiles. So they can, you know. This should be legal. Necrophilia is a complete victimless crime because even if you believe in the in souls, you're not fucking using it anymore. I used to know a guy who was a necrophile back in the kink scene in Belfast, and his girlfriend used to lie in the freezer for like 20 minutes before they had sex and lie still afterwards. <laughs> he had a big chest freezer, and she would she would like oh she was all into it too, but she would just like sit in the freezer until she was like cold, and then just lie there like this. And he would have his wicked way with her, and they would enjoy it. Good for them. They found a way around it. Mm. <laughs> I want to see like purge movies where you've got like random illegal things going on. Because <laughs> just a guy in a trench coat going around, <laughs> showing off his dick. Yeah, something like that. And this one you have like twenty minutes just with this sort of, you know, really really nice and happy Latino family. And because they're so nice and happy in this sort of film, you expect them to be poisoning everyone or something. Yeah, and they were they were like. Go on, drink, 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 drink. Make sure you drink. Have a drink, please. Have a drink. Have drink all some the food. Wine. Have all the food. You Eat know. this food. Eat the fucking food. <laughs> and then, of course, it just turns out that one of them is having an affair with another person's husband. So, like, you know, they start yeah, shooting the, each other. Uh, there's two sisters, and the fat sister's husband is sleeping with the skinny sister. 
So the fat sister shoots them. So it's just like a, you know, a daily event in a crazy American soap opera. What I want to, they're even fighting over like an ugly and unattractive man. Which is yeah. a, actually, it's a little bit like sort of a Jerry Springer thing. And I knew that was going to happen because like the entire thing is like, oh, my mom was cooking so good. 888, my sister's testament to how good my mom was cooking is. Stop calling me fat, you bitch. <laughs> That's the sort of scene where you expect them to be like, you know, a cannibal family or something. Yeah. And it's just like, nah, it's a squabble of some sort, you know, soap opera. And it, it's even more you think it's poison because the, the sister who's like insisting everybody eats, like goes and hides the bathroom and takes pills that I assumed were an antidote or something. Yeah. And then it's... Oh, I was going to make some sort of really, really important thing that would change all of you motherfuckers' lives. I'd forgotten what it is now, goddammit. About that whole section. Oh no. My brain is going. You talk. I'll try to remember. <laughs> also, I got a bit annoyed with the Punisher guy. At one point, he takes off his bulletproof vest and gives it to the young girl. And then they get to the friend's house and she takes it off. And he's like getting ready to go out. Can I have a shirt? And they're like, sure, what's mine is yours. Take away. Gets his shirt out of the closet and sticks it on. And then just. He's like, right, I'm ready to go. I didn't put my bulletproof vest back on. It's sitting on the table. I just remembered what it was. The Purge is going to make so many families have such an awkward time. Because, you know, this family, they ran off right in the middle of all this stuff, right when the building was getting stormed by a bunch of paramilitary. So they're probably all dead, but they don't care. We're just going off. Da, 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 da. Even if they're not dead, you're going to have a situation where, like, you know, several people are being shot. I think the husband, you know, the husband was shot dead as well. Yeah. Just, like, two people are dead in their party, and it's like, oh, God. And then the, the daughter's like, well, I can't be arrested for this. Hello, mommy and daddy. I killed your other daughter. Ha ha. <laughs> it's going to be a great Christmas. <laughs> it's going to bring, it begs the question, we saw about a, at least 100 murders in this movie. Well, they weren't murders, killings. Mm -hmm. uh, is there, like, some sort of body cleanup agency? Probably. Because, like, at, at what point do they know, like, you call them up, like, 20 minutes after the purge ends, and they arrive at your house, and they're like, hmm, are you sure this guy was killed last night during the purge? You didn't kill him at 8 o'clock this morning? There would have to be, like, a gray area or something. What I would assume, um, if they were thinking this through logically, there would be, like, an hour where you're not allowed to kill, because uh, they can tell, like, within an hour of when someone was killed. Mm. So you'd have to have, like, an hour where you're not allowed to kill. That's what I'd assume, that ha if they were doing this logically. But of course they're not, because the film's fucking ridiculous. Um, there was like one threatened rape in the whole film as well, which, if you're going to have psychopaths out there just killing for sport and fun, not that I'm encouraging rape in any way, shape or form, please don't take it that way, but I would expect there to be more than one rapist on the list. Tell you this guy... The guy who was doing this, he was all, like, really upset that this woman has the temerity to live in the same building as him and not, you know, give him sex for being a for nice saying guy. hello. For saying hello every day when she comes in. <laughs> this guy's totally on a voice for man. So, so, so he saved up, bought himself a shotgun with a grenade launcher attachment, shot through her wall, came in and was like, I'm going to rape you and your daughter. And then whenever they didn't, you know, accept this, um, you know, he was going to go online and, you know, cry about misandry. Then he got shot in the head. And the chest, and the arm, and the leg. Yeah, it was a it was a fully automatic rifle. He got shot everywhere. Actually, there are parts of his body that are more pieces of small bits of metal than flesh. Good. <laughs> and there was a banker. Uh, they walked past the banks like the banking districts always empty this time of year. The banks take all the money out. Right. So where is all the money? Go rob there. But uh, yeah, that's a point. <laughs> the, 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 like, banks are the safest place to have fucking money. It's incredibly oh, difficult. Oh, it'd be cheaper to, to have go. guards. It's incredible. It's it's a time lock safe. You're going to take seven hours cutting into that. Yeah, and, che and it would be cheaper to have guards. Yeah, but... Uh, guards that you pay well, so they don't, you know, not encouraged to steal it. Our, our, our party just is walking... Or, if they have guards, then if the guards steal the, the bank money, then the actual original stealing will not be a crime if it's in the purge. However... Having the bank money after the purge ends, that will be a crime because you are holding stolen property. Yes. So you, you could get them afterwards. Or just get psychopaths who don't really care about money to be your guards and be like, anybody tries to steal this, shoot them dead and like some rip the men, corpse. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Just, it's not that hard to find people who are more interested in killing than money. Especially here. Yeah. I'm not interested in killing Maiming and torturing, maybe, but not killing. 
<laughs> I like my victims to be alive. Well, yeah, at the start. At the end, too. Then they can tell their friends. <laughs> <laughs> How else do I get good reviews? Oh, on TripAdvisor or Yelp or something. <laughs> Robin the Minion was a very, very attentive rapist. Gave me a cup of tea afterwards. <laughs> Robin the Minion did a very good millimeter square pattern on my legs with a knife before dipping me in concentrated lemon juice. I found this most torturous. <laughs> so in this bounce at the bank we found someone had crucified uh, a stockbroker and I was like, you know, these guys were like, yeah, oh, that's fine, you know. I got a stockbroker who stole a bunch of people's like pensions and stuff. And, and he had a cardboard sign in front, here lies Neil whatever. He stole our pensions. Now he's gone. No, he's, he's, he's hanging Now there. he's gone. But, okay, opposed to the death penalty. Hate the death penalty. However, there, there are, whenever people get killed, there are certain, you know, some deaths I feel worse about than others. And someone who, uh, a banker who for their own profit liquidates other people's money and other people's pensions and fucks over their entire lives and future, driving people to suicide. I don't find myself feeling very sorry for them if they end up crucified. <laughs> sorry? Yeah, I think that's a thing though. Not many people do. See, that's why this is a very. This is actually. It's a. It's. This is like a left-wing exploitation series because you got people yelling stuff about um, how this is, you know, their their right, you know, to kill and everything. It's sort of a similar to people yelling about their right to bear arms and all. You've and, got and the guy at the start was like, "I'm gonna rape you. This is my right." Yeah, it's. They're purposing a bunch of right-wing rhetoric and uh, sort of talking points and stuff, and repackaging it. And into the, this... the, sorry, sorry, the rich guys before they like they bought the the two girls. They bought their grandfather slash father to kill. Uh, the rich families just stand around and hold hands. God bless America. It is our God-given right to have this kill. Yeah, it's it's like taking American right-wing uh, sort of the crazy elements. And you know the non-crazy elements are constantly diminishing. And why was there nobody flying about in random stolen seven four seven? You see, that, that's hopefully that's going to be in the Purge three. I want them to. I want. I want the, this franchise to continue just with because the central conceit is fucking stupid. But once you've got the central conceit, you can do. You can do a fuckload with it. Oh, and if they step up the third movie as much as they stepped up the second movie, I would genuinely like to see it. Yeah, yeah, I want to see more. Oh, yeah, the guy who killed the Punisher's son, and then the Punisher was going to hunt him down. Since he's a guy in sort of an upper suburban house and everything, and he had two kids and everything, I was like, oh, please be Ethan Hawke from the first one. I totally <laughs> want it to be him. I want the, each one to be like a side quill to the, to the last. It's like, no, it's not Ethan Hawke. Oh, boo. That would have been quite funny. I also want to see a crossover between uh, The Purge and Sinister, because Ethan Did Hawke Ethan was in Hawk both of them. Ethan die in the first Purge? Did he? I can't remember. I don't think I so. I think it was the wife who was left alive at the end, like, around the breakfast table being like, We are going to sit here and eat breakfast. Oh, it's going to be it's gonna be awkward. <laughs> I still want to see an Ethan Hawke off between Sinister and The Purge, where, you know, uh, the people team up with, like, the ghoul to kill people for 12 hours. I saw trailers today. We saw a trailer for Annabelle, and I recognized what it was. And I started going into sort of, I started freaking out and everything. Not because it's scary, but because it's a fucking prequel to the fucking Conjuring. Fuck you, Conjuring. <laughs> it's like, oh, we got like this a scary doll that does shit. And I've seen pictures of them. It's been done. Apart from that, I've seen pictures of the original Annabelle doll that this is based on. And it's much fucking scarier than the one in the movie. Because the one in the movie is just like, oh, look, we are deliberately over-designing the most scary, you know, uh, porcelain doll that we can that's sort of Victorian-y. It looks like this. While the original one looks more like a fucking mutated Raggedy Ann slash Cabbage Patch thing, and it's much more freaky, even though it's sort of like generic looking, but it's really fucking, it's more disturbing looking, even though it's still yeah, not. Yeah, actual old porcelain dolls look disturbing. Well, wow, this the one in the movie is a porcelain doll. They made it a porcelain doll because they thought it was more disturbing, oh, while I, the original I, one looks more worrying. I mean, I mean, just like generally the actual old dolls, not ones that have been manufactured that look bad. Ah. But, um, yeah, that looks like shit because it's got the conjuring involved. We saw a trailer for horror movie number four as well. Another random demon possession thing with the main New character York. being a straight guy who doesn't 
believe in this shit. I'm Eric Banner. I'm in New York. I'm gonna do an exorcism thing. And then Joel McHale's the villain for some reason. And then there's this Latino guy who knows stuff about exorcism because Latino means Catholic. Okay, so, guys, I want to make a serious point here. Random exorcism, where the main character doesn't believe in this shit. Uh, his wife's obviously a Christian and is all like, Praise Jesus, exercise my baby. Uh, random things possessed by demons. Random houses that are haunted with the slight spin-off of people who are haunted instead. And, you know, poltergeist shit happens. And then fucking random shit like Insidious. Can we, can we have something original? Like, I mean, say what well, you want. To be fair, this new one is like a hardcore New York crime movie with a hard-boiled detective crossed with an exorcism movie. I would not have put those two genres together, to be fair. That's a bit like having a romantic comedy where at the end everyone gets raped by chainsaws. I would watch that. So would I, now that I think about it. You know, <laughs> also, you know what would be scarier than Annabelle? That would be scarier than Annabelle. Somebody's Message gonna... me on Hag on Facebook group. There's like five or six of these that are going. $35 each, if you want one. <sighs> Advertising. We also saw a trailer for Liam Neeson being a detective. Yeah, Liam Neeson. Hi, I'm Liam Neeson, wearing an obvious wig with a fake beard. Uh, I'm a super cop. Uh, I accidentally shot someone. Uh, I still sound like I'm from Northern Ireland because I'm Liam Neeson. Oh no, I'm not a cop anymore. Uh, I gotta do stuff. I'm not a private detective. I just help people out and then they do me favors and give me gifts. I'm a man with a very particular set of skulls. I am an actor with a very specific type of role. Why the fuck did Liam Neeson become an action hero? When did this happen? Taken. Why? Because he got the part in Taken and people liked it. Liam Neeson. Why do people even like Liam Neeson? I think Liam Neeson's awesome. <laughs> Out I of mean, all the Northern Irish actors who have a career in Hollywood, why Liam Neeson? I would. I, I would rather see fucking Sam Neill or Kenneth Branagh as an action hero. Imagine <laughs> Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh's an action hero. It's like, yes, school is out for the summer. Love. <laughs> I would say Kenneth Branagh is the doctor. <laughs> Basically, watch Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. <laughs> Let him direct action hero movies too. He just spins around, has Matt random lips flying around, and then, you know, Matthew Lillard singing because it's the 1930s, even though it's Shakespeare. That would be awesome. <laughs> I think Kenneth Branagh is fucking insane when it comes to his directing choices, and I love it. Oh. But I, th I think Liam Neeson has that kind of hot old guy thing. You wouldn't get that. Liam Neeson's like... I'm not... Okay, I have never managed to forgive Liam Neeson for, for the fact that his voice replaced Brian Cox's as Aslan in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Now, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is shit, so Liam Neeson replacing him, that makes sense on that level. But it's like, Liam Neeson's just Liam Neeson. At least Brian Cox can act. And he can play someone who's not himself. In fact, I dare say Brian Cox would be a more convincing Liam Neeson than Liam Neeson. You're very opinionated today. <laughs> I just I don't understand the appeal of Liam Neeson. Yeah, he was fine when he turned up wearing green and crawl and getting killed. Where he, he had like two lines and no one recognized him because he was 20. But you know, it's like, yeah, I'm Liam Neeson. I don't have any particular body muscle or anything like that that makes me an action hero. And, and suddenly age 50, I'm in the fucking action movies. Why? While being clearly Northern Irish. Okay, that might be it. Hello there, it's William calling you just to warn you. I've been telling you about a wee deal. Yeah. It, <laughs> the fact that he's Northern Irish is the only explanation I can think of, because Americans subconsciously know that, you know, we eat fire and blow up buildings with our mind. Yeah. Anyway, back to the purge. That would be awesome in Northern Ireland. Yeah, the purge in, <laughs> purge in Northern Ireland. There wouldn't be a city centre in Belfast anymore. In um in Derry, for ye literally years, there was a KFC in the center of town, and then every single year, because you know we have a rioting season, um yeah we do, it would be mysteriously burned down by a bunch of you know citizens who are you know purging you know their baser instincts and anger. Eventually, they stopped rebuilding it. There were some other shops that they would do this as well. So now there's only a KFC further outside of town. But now the building that's in there now is called Hillbilly's Chicken, which is sort of like a... I've been told it might be racist, but it's like a take, local takeoff of KFC. And it's never burned down. So obviously, 
fake, possibly racist takeoffs of southern fried chicken <laughs> is more popular with the locals than actual KFC. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I live in a village that is quite far away from here, and none of you will ever learn the name of it, so... But it, it's about 80 miles away. It's called Belfast, it's not that important. Just because your city's old. But, uh, no, yeah. I don't, uh, the village I'm talking about is not Belfast. And this village, about once a year, gets a bomb put under the one point of the village existing, which is the bridge. It's literally a village built around a bridge. And there's a little bridge that goes over a little river, and just every year it's like, oh, there's a bomb under the bridge again. Why? I don't know, somebody wants it gone. That's the 12th or something. Oh, it's nowhere near a twelfth. It's fucking. It's due next month. <laughs> <laughs> it's really inconvenient because it means I have to drive around. The... I have to go up to like three villages away to go over the other bridge to go to my house. Apparently, that's what happened in the seventies in Derry uh, before the second bridge was opened, <laughs> and when the troubles were at their height, whenever whole sections of the city were locked up and you couldn't get into places, and you know there was the constant armored cars driving around with rifles. It was a bit like the purge, really. Yeah. Although the purge in Derry, you would have the city centre blown up and cocks drawn and everything. Just so it's basically Derry from the early 90s. Fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. It's a bet. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. You know... I'm towards that person. I'm sitting here being completely peaceful and wonderful. Send all complaints to Linkara at tigwitig.com. Including legal ones. Poor Linkara's like, Oh no! I, I just walked into my room and, Oh no! I'm totally getting, you know, libel threats again. I don't even know what a Belfast is! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm getting dangerously close here. <laughs> Right, enough of me doing this, because I'm going to get arrested. Well, I'm in charge of the editing of this, so I'm... Actually, what I might do is put this into the wrong order, and, like, cut random parts out, just to make it sound look worse than it is. It's the kind of thing you would do. So The Purge was a good movie, surprisingly. It was better than expected. It was an amazing movie. It was nicely over the top, and... You know, it's good to see a big screen new exploitation film. Weird use of CGI though. There was some practical blood, there was some CGI blood. Yeah. There was a CGI shutter on a door. Yeah. It was all like, here we go. Yeah. But it's not even like they filmed a, like a, a shutter which happens like at a garage or something. And then sort of put it on top of the door. It was just like, nah, CGI it. Well, putting one of them on an actual house would only cost you like uh, maybe 10, 20 quid. I mean, how much did you pay? Like, I'll see you in that. I mean, gonna... look over there. It's a big 30 foot tall one. I know, it's a fucking ridiculous. Uh, yeah, you yeah, fucking purge. Hi. <laughs> hi, hey, hi. You fucking ruined the movie. I know. Just looking at that, no one up one night either. You know one person who did like it? Magella. You don't know Magella? Not a bit. No. Uh, well, and you see, the trick with this whole thing is you, you just gotta, you know, increase the speed of your, your, your talk, and you gotta make it even less intelligible as you go on, so by the end of it, hopefully no one has any idea what you're doing. Well, you say that it's quite intelligent to do that, because it actually makes the audience I'm just really get very car confusion, you know what I mean? And if that worked well, then hopefully very few of you had any idea what we were saying towards the end of those sentences. If you knew what we were saying, write to us on Linkara at Tiquity. I can't make the same joke twice. Yes, you can. You've done this several times. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is my special round of appearance again. Yeah. Hopefully you'll be back, uh, because... Now I want everyone to comment about this. I want Robin to come down in about two weeks again for the weekend to hang out and watch movies and stuff. And Robin's being all like, I don't know if I can do it! And I'm like, come on down, Robin. So leave comments. So we'll start a Facebook. We'll start, if we get like 10,000 likes and then make Robin come down, Robin will promise to come down. 10,000. Or, <laughs> or up, actually. Or up, because, you know, if you went down from Belfast, you'd end up in Dublin, which is just counterproductive from my point of view. Call it west. Northwest. This is the most northern, most west city in Northern Ireland.
Yeah, uh, it's not the most north city in Ireland, though. City-wise, it is. Yeah, I suppose. Because yeah, cities in cities in Ireland: Dublin, Belfast, Derry, and I'm sure there's another one, but it doesn't really count because it's shit. Cork, Limerick. Limerick's not a city. Yeah, it is. Limerick's a bunch of stabbings in a university. <laughs> I thought Limerick was a five-line poem. <laughs> okay, I've, never, I've only ever hung out at the University of Limerick because that's where Brocon is, and I like hanging out there, but it's like, city. I'm turning into Omega, she's all like, you call that a city? <laughs> well, Derry's not a city compared to Belfast. I mean, it's like an eighth of the size. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> Derry is also about 20 times older than Belfast, so it's more important. <laughs> it's smaller than Central Park. And it's been inhabited for 2,500 years. So I'm like, yeah! And yes, if you find, like, a barn that's been inhabited for 3,000 years, that's technically a city by my logic. <laughs> uh, the definition of a city in this country is ridiculous. It's, like, based on how many cathedrals you have and population size. Actually, as well as royal charter. It's, uh, population's not so much. It's, uh, you got to have a cathedral and or a royal charter. Mm -hmm. And uh, the royal charters are handed out by the queen. Or the king, if they're a queen king. She's such a queen. Yes. But Derry's been a city officially since 1600, something like that. 1690? Older than your, your country, Americans. My dick's older than America. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. I did promise I would do this. I know without any sort of pushing, I'm admitting that my dick is less than three feet in girth. Oh, yes. Good work. They have no idea what we're talking about. No, but I said I'd say it on camera. Yes, you did. It's nice that you say that before you mysteriously get killed. It won't be that mysterious. Oh, really? If, if, if you're going to kill Robin for, you know, those controversial things said earlier, um... At least do it when the camera's on. I'm sure I could get some views out of that. If, if I do die mysteriously in the next month or so, uh, Creature, you're in charge of presenting this video to the police. Yeah, but I have no idea who did it based on the video. It's like, we can't fucking tell who killed you. You're pissed off everyone, including us. And the police officer just like, you know, we would have killed you too. So literally everyone's a suspect from that point. Actually, Liam Neeson ki you know, killed you because he mistook me for you. You're not that androgynous. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm saying horrible things about Liam Neeson's sense of everything. <laughs> I like Liam Neeson. I think he's hot. Well then, Liam Neeson. <laughs> and, and, and that. So now Liam Neeson. <laughs> it could now happen. That's libel. <laughs> we cut out the clip of this. If I cut the earlier part? Yeah. But anyway, we're running out of tape, so... Yes. I don't know. The Purge is interesting. It, it does feel like an older exploitation film shot today. Yeah, it's still fucking really stupid. Oh, incredibly stupid, but better than I expected it to be, but still not amazing. I want Frank Grillo as the Punisher. He would be a good Punisher. Purge! Oh my god! Robin is possibly turned into a Lego creature, depending if this force perspective works or not. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, just so you know, there is a Hagen Patreon now. There will be a full-on video about this, probably featuring death and stuff, but we have not managed to film it yet because I've been sick. So, please, if you want to check out the Hagen Patreon, see what rewards are available, stuff like that, just go here, take a look. You never know. I might end up reviewing a movie you've always wanted me to review.